I'm like, girl, no. Give me a reason. Do we expect anything less? Never seen this side of her, but she looks killer. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Dragues Belgique, season two, episode five, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end to let you know who had my best and worst looks of the week. Anyway, this week on the runway, the theme is Skate Baby Skate, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a skate look. That is right, they are coming down the runway wearing roller skates. And this theme has got me confused, but more on that a little bit later. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First up, it's Chloe Clark, and Chloe Clark is coming out in this metallic silver suit she's got this big metallic head and she's definitely giving you martian galaxy extraordinaire she is strutting down the runway barely balancing on her skates and but she is looking fabulous doing it first off i will say that chloe clark is starting out with a bang she's coming out with a look but do we expect anything less it's chloe clark she is the one who's been turning up the looks all season long and here is no different but you can see that she is struggling on the runway wearing these skates and this really puts the question why are we having this runway like clearly it's just making the outfit look worse you want to be able to sell it on the runway and if you can barely stand then eh, like it's really not adding to the theme it's just a gimmick for the sake of a gimmick but chloe clark despite her struggling is looking fantastic she's got all the armor pieces and she is definitely giving you a moment i love this headpiece it's such a different look different interpretation i love this edgier side all in all i think chloe is looking fantastic and that is why she is definitely gonna get a fab Next up, it's La Verve, and La Verve is coming out in this red and black cyberpunk inspired outfit. She's got this giant helmet on and these padding all over the place. She is really giving you that futuristic Tron vibe. First, I will say that I do like this interpretation. I think it's really original and very different. Um, I didn't necessarily see this for La Verve, but you know, work woman. And I also like that she was smart about the roller skates that she was wearing because the roller skates, she went with a typical roller blade and that actually felt a little bit more suited to this look. Now let's talk about the look. I don't know if I love this look. The problem I have with this look is that it definitely feels very mask. It definitely feels very male. It's not really giving me female. And that's mainly because she's got a lot of this body armor on and none of it is very feminine. Had she done the same body armor, but had boobs built into the body armor, I think that would have been really like next level. Um, had she done a bunch of rhinestones along all the red edging, it would have taken it to the next level. It's just really missing all of those details to really take it to the next level. Um, she then has the giant weapon, which is super cool, but it's got the tiniest little stick. If this is supposed to be a weapon, it needs to be bigger, bigger. It needs to be bulkier. It needs to feel like a weight. This feels a little like grim rippery. It feels a little bit thin. It feels a little bit flimsy. And 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 from a weapon like that, you want it to feel like next level huge. I think this would probably photograph well, but on the runway, it is not the best. She does eventually take off her mask and her makeup is quite beautiful and it's one of the better makeups that Lever has done and I'm quite interested to see the side of her. All in all, it's good. It, de it definitely makes the impact on the runway that you want, but it's still not great and it's really missing those little elements that take it to the next level. This feels like a version one of the idea that you didn't have a time to complete or you haven't done again, but this is Drag Race and Drag Race, you need to be at a level two to 10. All in all, it's fine. I can go either way, but because of the impact on the runway and because of the uni uniqueness of it all, I'm gonna go with a soft fab. 
Next up is Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is coming out and giving us 70s icon Raquel Welch. She is going down, giving you that whole original disco vibe. What I do like is that Lulu Velvet at least tried to incorporate the theme in more than just a pair of roller skates. She decided to go with the, this iconic 70s look, which is more roller skatey, so therefore it kind of makes sense, at least loosely, uh, which I can kind of appreciate. The look itself is well made, it's well thought through, but it's missing that va 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 voom. So as much as I like the idea and the theme here, I'm just missing that really like show stopping moment, uh, which I felt something like La Verve had. La Verve was missing the cleanliness of Lulu Velvet, but Lulu Velvet is missing that big moment of La Verve. And not to say that La Verve was the best either, but they definitely can help each other is what I'm trying to say. I love this wig, I love this vibe. As she goes down the runway, she pulls off her pants to reveal a little pussycat on her uh, naughty bits, and it had me so confused because this ha came out of left field and had nothing to do with anything. I was like, why is the reveal even there? And if you're gonna do a reveal, at least make it make sense. She said that she's channeling her own cat, and I'm like, girl, at least stick to the theme. Uh, or if you're gonna say you're gonna channel your own cat, at least tell me that your cat's name is Raquel Welch. Like, give me a reason, because this was just stupid for the sake of stupid, and I don't think that the reveal actually worked or added anything to the outfit. If anything, I felt like this reveal took away from the outfit. With all that said, I think this look is very safe. It's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. Um, so I'm gonna go with a soft bow. Next up, it's Alvida, and Alvida is coming out in this pink latex ruffle outfit, this white face, and this pink mohawk with a pink bat. She's wearing these pink heeled boots with roller skates on them. She said that she is giving you a little bit of that purge clown fantasy and making it a little bit more demonic. Oh, she comes out and I was like, impact, baby. I love the... The, 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 the grandness of it. I love the show stoppy of -ness. I love this whole interpretation, this creepy thing. I like things strange. I mean, just look at me today. I decided to go a little wacky noodle and I love that Alvita also did something a little bit off the wall. I love the makeup. I love the lines in her makeup. That's something really cool that I'm gonna have to try out on one of these runways. I love the mohawk. It's got this really gender bendery vibe with the mohawk and the pink and the frills. And it's definitely giving you that killer clown fantasy. She's definitely got a lot of the rhinestones here and there that really make it elevated and make it feel next level. And the fact that she is roller skating on heels is like super cool. Now, real critique I have is that this idea has nothing to do with roller skates. It just happens to be on roller skates, which is kind of like the bummer part of it. I think this would have looked even better without the skates on, to be honest. That being said, she looks killer, pun intended. I love it from head to toe. It's something that I would definitely want to try to pull off uh, for some sort of look. Don't know where I would wear it, but I would definitely want to pull it off. And she's looking freaking fab. And that is why for Miss Alvida, it is definitely going to be a bum. Next up, it's Gabbana, and Gabbana's coming out in these pants and sort of bralette with all of these chains and this big blonde ponytail hair. It's definitely giving you a little bit of that 90s sports vibes. I'm seeing a little bit of Sporty Spice in there. I'm seeing a little bit of TLC in there. I'm definitely getting a specific vibe from her. It was a crazy departure for Gabbana because we've never seen this side of her, but you know what? I really like this side of her. I think this is really cool. What I like is that this is a different silhouette and something a little bit different and as we're getting later into the competition, you kind of need to show different sides of yourself and Gabbana is doing a really good job of that. But more importantly than all of that, what I do like is she took this skater theme to the next level. If you actually look at the garment, you realize that the garment and accessories are all made from different pieces of roller skates. She's got like chain, she's got the little neck piece and this is the smartness that you need. If you're gonna get a theme like roller skate and you're gonna be on roller skates, then how does this all connect? And Gabbana is one of the only people to really make it connect from head to toe. Now, I don't think that the outfit is as strong as some of the other queens, unfortunately. Some of the other queens definitely went bigger with their concepts, but maybe didn't attach it to the theme as well as Gabbana. The other thing that really helps Gabbana is she actually knows how to roller skate. And because she knows how to roller skate, she's able to sell the garment on the runway a lot better. Now. I don't know what's wrong with these other queens. You knew that this was coming. You were given these themes before coming on the show. You had time to prepare. 
Don't you think you would have rolled around your house a little bit or down the street in some roller skates before coming on the show? I mean, I don't know if Gabbana knew it before or she trained after it. It doesn't matter because she got it done and she was able to sell it. All in all, I think this is really well done. It's really smart. It's maybe not the biggest and best, but it is a well thought through idea and that I can appreciate so much. And not and let's not forget, she looks great. And that is why for Gabbana, it is gonna be a bop. Next up, it's Star and Star is coming out in Madonna, she is channeling her inner sorry from Madonna. Now, girl, I love Madonna, so when I saw this come out, I was like, yes, work, mama. I love that she decided to go into sort of this character uh, aspect, and this is a character that Star's aesthetic works really well with, because Star likes to put a lot of things on her, and this kind of works for this look. She's got the little silver jacket, and the white boots, and the long, flowy, blonde hair. She also sells it like Madonna, doing the little move as she's selling it down the runway. That said, at one point she goes and takes off her jacket and the underneath is really plain, like plain like this. I'm like, girl, no. I'm like, I can maybe get away with this basic look because I am on a YouTube channel. You are on one of the biggest drag stages, drag race. You need to really step it up. She should have kept the jacket on because it added so much. That said, the entire outfit is quite simple. It's a jacket with a bodysuit and some boots. It could really be elevated, but she got away with it because she was channeling someone so famous that people love. All in all, I think this is okay. Not the best, not the worst, uh, but definitely enough to get her by, and that is why she's gonna get a soft bow. And that is it for this runway. Girl, let's talk about the runway. First, I will say I'm glad that the queens are actually stepping up their and are able to turn out some looks finally. I have, I literally did not give a single drab to anybody, which is a first. So every week they are getting better and better, which I love to see. This theme was garbage. Producers, I don't know what you were doing here. This was just a bunch of different looks on roller skates and sometimes the roller skates didn't even matter. I think they should have integrated the roller skate themes better into it or just trash the roller skate theme altogether because honestly, I think we could have got some much fiercer looks had the roller skates disappeared. But enough about my rant, let's get into the reason why you are here. You are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week had to go to no one. That is right. I did not give any drabs. So I felt it was not right to have a drab of the week this week, even though I do have one in mind. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week, I'm going to give it to Alvida. I love this look. I love the craziness of this look. I love the I love gardenness of the look. I love the, the weirdness of this look. And we need some of this crazy weird stuff on Drag Race because everybody's tending to do this ultra feminine stuff. And I like when people push the boundaries and Alvida did that with this look. So sorry, Chloe Clark, you were amazing. Uh, but this one just stepped out of the box just a little bit more for me. And that's why I chose Alvida. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them or some of them. Depends how busy I get, girl. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series and I'm getting very, very close. Uh, so I really appreciate it. Uh, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms and I'll see you next week. Bye. -bye.